what are the differences between RCSI and Snapshot? This is, this is kind of confusing because there's a lot that these have in common. They both use the version store. They both use the transaction 14 bytes, right? There's a lot that these have in common. The differences are read committed snapshot isolation changes that default isolation level for the database. One thing about this, by the way, if you enable read committed snapshot isolation, you have to be the only active user in the database. It also provides statement level consistency. So in a single query, I'm not going to have those weird double counting issues or under counting issues or seeing weird combinations of data. And that is great. That's huge. Snapshot isolation, it, when you change the property, it allows people to use snapshot isolation, but to use it, they have to say set transaction isolation level snapshot. And then they can stop using it when they want to stop using it too. It provides data consistent with when you run begin tran in a transaction. So if we have those multi-statement reports and we want everything to add up to when we start querying the data, we can do that. Let's take a quick look at a demo and we're going to demo snapshot isolation in here and just show that problem of how easy it is for read uncommitted to return wrong data and how snapshot can fix that. For our demo, I have already restored the Babby name sample database. The download location is at the top of your script. First off, what I'm going to do is just check my current settings on the database. You can quickly tell if you're using snapshot isolation or read committed snapshot isolation by querying the sys.databases dynamic management view. Right now, read committed snapshot is not on. The column is read committed snapshot on is set to zero. And the snapshot isolation state description, we get a description field for this one, it is set to off. Snapshot isolation can actually be in a pending state sometime. You can enable and disable the ability for people to use snapshot isolation while people are still in the database. So if everybody's in, I don't have to throw them out like I have to do for RCSI. If I enable snapshot isolation and I've got some long running transactions running, I may see it go into pending before it is fully on. So if you are changing the setting, you do need to be careful for a lot of reasons. If people are using snapshot isolation and you suddenly say, oh, nobody can use this, then their queries are going to fail. That is one, one thing that you have to definitely be careful of. I'm going to go ahead and enable this on my database. And I enable snapshot isolation by saying I'm going to allow people to use snapshot isolation from here on out in this database. And as soon as I enable this, as soon as I enable the ability for people to use snapshot, the process of versioning, of using those timestamps on our tables themselves and of creating versions in TempDB, that's going to happen right away because SQL Server doesn't know it, someone could run a, a snapshot transaction at any time. Now, it's not going to happen until I start making modifications. <laughs> so it doesn't happen in this case right away, but it's ready to make those versions as soon as I start making modifications as long as it has succeeded in enabling itself. And by requerying the sys.databases view, I can see that snapshot isolation is on. People can use snapshot isolation in our database. For the sake of our index, or for the sake of our demo, I am creating an index on ref.firstname. We have, just like you saw in the slides, we have an index on simply the first name column. Everything is going to be ordered by first name. The row that we will be updating in our index is this row, A-A-B-A-N. We are going to be updating this row in another session. We're going to be updating it to ZZ, A-A-B-A-N, and back over and over again. This update we'll have to move the data. It'll have to move that row in our index on ref.firstname. This index is more than just one page, so it will have to physically move this row to different pages in the index. While we are moving the row, we will also be counting the rows in our session. How many babies are in this table? Now, the number of babies in the table is gonna be the same the whole time because we're running an update. We're not running any deletes. We're not running any inserts. We're just changing the value of a name. We aren't deleting any rows. We aren't adding any rows. We're simply changing a name in here. But this query that counts a name, like you saw in the slides, we say we wanna count the names in this table and it decides that the best way to count the name 
is to scan the non-clustered index. SQL Server has things like statistics that help give it estimates of how much data it has for different values, but those are just estimates. It needs to try to get and I do say try, to get a correct answer to this. So it is going to go ahead and scan the index. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy out the updates. And I'm going to put them in another session so that our updates will just be happening here. It will be running this batch of updates where it sets the name to start with a Z, sets it back to start with an A over and over and over again. Here we go. The updates are taking off. And meanwhile, we are going to count the names in this session. I have enabled snapshot isolation, but for snapshot isolation, we're just allowing it. Unless I say in my session that I want to use snapshot isolation, which I have not done, I will be using read committed. And if I want to verify that, I can use dbcc user options. The dbcc user options command will return for my session what isolation level are you in? I'm using read committed because I have not changed that yet. So I'm going to start off our query who counts the names, who's running under read committed here. And it's counting the names and it's counting them 2000 times. It's doing a loop while it's less than 2000 times. So it's counting the name 2000 times and it's recording on each run how many it counted and it's putting that in a table. Well, it has finished up and let's see how many names it counted. There was always the exact same amount of names in this table. We did not add any babies. We did not delete any babies. We simply changed a name. But SQL Server undercounted the number of babies in the table 1,001 times, and it overcounted eight times. We were wrong more often than we were right. <laughs> and that's just simply not correct. There was always the same number of rows in this table. We just ran an update. But this is because read committed uses locking and it relies on locking to protect itself. And it's only read committed is letting go of locks really quickly. It is possible for data to move around and for the same statement to encounter that data more than once or to miss it entirely. Well, I have enabled snapshot isolation on my database. I'm already doing the work of all those versioning. Let's, let's see what happens if I actually use snapshot isolation. I'm going to set my transaction isolation level to snapshot. And now if I do dbcc user options, I can see that now that I have explicitly set my isolation level to snapshot, yes, it is set to snapshot here. If you enable read committed snapshot isolation level for the database, that changes the default isolation level for the database. And if you use the database, you can see read committed snapshot as your isolation level there. All right, well, I am using snapshot isolation. I am now going to run, this is the same code we ran before. It's just another copy of it. So you don't have to scroll back up in your script. So once again, I'm counting 2000 times, the same number of times I am counting the names there, but instead of relying on locking, I am using the version store in SQL Server to make sure that I get data consistent with when my query started. And now I don't undercount the data. I don't overcount the data. All 2000 times this ran, I saw the correct answer and I returned the correct answer. And that is really, really important for most of our databases in SQL Server to return the correct answer. 